Hi, I'm Ruth. This is my first ever talk. Please be gentle. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to talk to you about um, how to have more fun during jams and less stress from an artist's perspective, since I am an artist myself. I currently work um, at Striking as a UI artist. I've participated in um, about at least eight jams, if not more, since the Global Game Jam 2013. I have had quite a bit of an experience um, with all kinds of different teams um, that's, that had like from two people to seven people um, within jams that lasted um, two to five, two and a half hours to 72 hours. I think 48 hours was the longest jam I've participated in. Um, we had all kinds of different topics, and I've met all kinds of different people. But my main, my main role was uh, being the 2D artist. I've done quite a bit of game design on the side, and some sound effects and music. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> um, yeah, so now that you know about me, let's talk about Tina. <laughs> this is Tina. Um, Tina recently took part in a game jam, and mm, she wasn't as satisfied as everybody else for some reason. Um, her jam was pretty stressful. She hardly had any sleep. She always felt kind of guilty during whenever she took breaks. Her expectations of the game weren't met at all. She really didn't want to make a racing game, you know? <laughs> she didn't know what she was doing most of the time. She felt kind of useless, frustrated and lost her motivation early on. Within the team, she couldn't express herself so well and her ideas. She thought that because she's a beginner, she shouldn't, maybe shouldn't get involved too much with the game design because she doesn't know better. Um, there was no proper cooperation in the team, um, which led to no playable game at all. That was a real disappointment um, to Tina. And above all, Tina wondered how all the other teams were able to cope so well with this time pressure and this, this chaos and all this workload during a game jam. And while staying happy and productive. So yeah, <laughs> Tina had a really bad time. I've met people like Tina. I've been like Tina myself. And I want to make game jams a better experience. Um, for all those Tinas out there. Is there a Tina in the audience tonight? Maybe, all right. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I, I created a de-stress and some sort of safety list. I created some kind of guidelines um, from my personal experiences to help with the general chaos and pressure during jams, something to hold on to when you're stuck in a jam. Um, so my presentation tonight will only cover parts of this list. The full list with lots of explanation is going to be online soon. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so the topic was announced. You found yourself a team. And now you've got to make sure that you start off well. Um, when we started off with the Flirtivator idea at the Global Game Jam 2015, we discussed all our working conditions from the start. That was a good thing. <clears throat> we basically talked about what kind of atmosphere um, we needed. Okay, mm. mostly. <laughs> um, we talked about whether, it's, yeah, it's, it's best to talk about whether somebody needs a lot of talking during production. Is there somebody who needs to do a lot of dialogue? for a, a text-based game, so they want to talk about this uh, text more. Is there somebody who does the sound design or somebody who's programming who needs a lot of quiet time and does, doesn't like it to be, you know, talked to so often? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's important. People get annoyed. <laughs> talk about whether you're, like, when you're going to sleep, if you're going to sleep during the weekend, um, maybe even schedule some kind of team breaks um, for a half time to reflect on what you've done so far. Um, that can help a lot and it can motivate a lot. And yeah, organize your overall jam time. Talk about how much effort you want to put into this jam. 
are you going to have to leave on the second day? Do you have work that something else that you have to do? Do you have like family or have you, have you just been sick and you're not feeling so well and but you still want to participate in the game? Talk about that. This is nothing to be ashamed of. It's really it's really okay. Just talk about it from the start and the team can plan with it and organize around this. Um, communicate your most important game goals. And by that I mean you need to make sure that if you want to have this gem about fun experimentation, talk about it. Do you want to create a game that has a definite start and end to it? Express it. Are you fine with everything, with, with anything, as long as, as long as it contains multiplayer? Express it. And maybe even all you need is firefighters. Um, <laughs> so talk about it and agree on one common team goal. So our Flirtivator team agreed on doing this fun dating sim. That's very important. Um, next, assign team roles and responsibilities, especially if you end up with a team that has multiple artists and maybe even multiple coders. You, you, you basically, you team up for the initial idea, so you don't really know who you're going to work with from the very beginning. So if you have like four artists and one programmer, it might be good to have one lead artist who helps with the decision making, with the overall style, with the consistency and can answer all kinds of art related questions the programmer has no idea of. <laughs> Speaking of lead, um, it's also really handy, um, especially for bigger teams, to have a team lead, an overall team lead, and I like to call this team lead a team captain, because captain is just a cool position. <laughs> It's it's really it feels really safe and really yeah it it really it feels safe to have somebody you can talk to you, somebody who's responsible someone who's reliable somehow um, that doesn't have to be the initial the person with the initial game idea it can be somebody who agrees on being the team captain and then you know sails the ship and um, if you have more than five people in your team. Um, it might help to have somebody who's responsible for the management. Um, with Flirtivator, we were um, exactly five people, and we were pretty um, good at managing ourselves. We used Trello um, to organize our tasks, and because everybody participated a little bit in the management, um, we ended up with a very polished game. So either you do it like that, or you have somebody who's responsible for all this task listing and things, if you want to do that. I recommend it for teams with five people or more. Um. Okay, so you've, ta you've gone through all the essentials and you're so motivated, but I'm telling you, it's so important to keep this motivation up, keep it alive. That is an effort, so care for your good team atmosphere. And you can do that by um, keeping in, in contact with your teammates. Talk to your teammates, that's important. I didn't really do it as much as I should have done, and I didn't feel so well during that time. So, I don't know, crack some jokes, talk about your game, and even socialize with other team members. Um, especially with Slotivator, people came to, our, um, to, to view our game, and they really encouraged us and helped us with problems. There's so many problems with that, with the dialogue, with the art style, and that felt pretty good. You really never want to feel like you're kind of distanced from your team. You're, you're stuck in a team of people you don't know on a jam site you've never been to and you don't know what you're supposed to do. That's the worst feeling. That's really something you never want to happen. It happened to me. I know what I'm talking about. It's, it's not cool. Yeah. So make sure you feel well and if you don't, talk to, your, to someone about it. Um, another good motivation boost is playing your own game. Sounds, sounds silly, but yes, many, especially people who do, the, who do the assets, tend to not play their game as often as they should. Um, especially for people with a slight god complex, like me, it feels really nice to see your assets come alive when you, when you check your, your early build and you see all these tiny um, little art figures, pixel art, whatever you've done, even a shiny logo, 
sparkle in the first build. It will boost your motivation so hard. And you can spot mistakes and you know exactly what to spot to polish early on. Um, track your progress. <laughs> so for Flirtivator, we used Trello and it was a blast. Um, I've got to say, for Flutter my role was to produce everything that was on the screen, like all the visuals, I did all the art. I um, did the game design, I helped with the writing, and even did some sound effects. Um, and I decided on being the team captain too. So I, had, I was pretty busy during that weekend. Um, but I even decided on, on, on using Trello and um, keeping track of all the tasks I have to do and I, I already done. And I felt so good about myself, seeing all these things I've done already. So make sure you acknowledge and realize the progress you've done so far, you've gone through. Um, it really helps you when once you feel stuck, you think, ah, oh, this is really isn't going to work out. Oh, we are never gonna finish our game. That's not important. Look at what you've done so far. You've come so far. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Well, so you have your team, you've gone through the essentials, you have got your motivation going, but before you start, there's something you need to be aware of, and that is that games are experiences, and you should design them as such. So ask yourself from the very beginning, what should the player feel while playing my game? What should the player remember after having played my game? So try to find that very core of your game, that essence of your game, something, the, the thing that makes up your game, and design everything around that. This is a team effort. Your roles are not important to, of, uh, to finding this, this game core. If you're not the game designer, that doesn't matter. You have to decide on what's, what's your game about, essentially. This can be a genre, it can be a mechanic, it can be a historical event, it can be firefighters, it can be anything. Um, during the development of um, Mixelman 2, a game um, of Ryan Smith, I um, helped out with art assets and in order to um, know how the atmosphere was supposed to be like in the game, we came up with this one sentence and this single sentence conveyed enough in motion for me to be able to create all the assets. And it was, um, it was German, so this is poorly translated. Um, basically, everywhere is always party. And <laughs> so even in the darkest dungeons of this game, there were still supposed to be all these colorful lights and pretty party decorations, so that the player always feels like there's this party going on wherever I'm going. And that really helped me design all the art. Um, you can even mash up existing game features. Um, for another game jam um, we did at university, we um, mashed up the combat system and the screen wrapping from Towerfall with these crate boxes of Super Crate Box. And that basically, this, this, this crossover was our main core. And we wanted, we, yeah, we, we really had a, a fun time and everybody had the same idea of the game. So once you find your core, you have to derive everything from it. Um, with Flirtivator, um, I really wanted to have these, to build up these warm and fluffy feelings within the player, to get really cheesy and pink, and, and you know? Um, and that's why, why I tried my best to go all the, all the curly fonts and pink colors and everything. But let's take a more aggressive example. Maybe your game core is about a storm. So, what do you have to do now? You know, you, you want to make a game about Storm. Well, get in the mood. Seriously. If you want to convey a mood, an atmosphere, you have to first be in it yourself. So, get outside. Feel the wind. Maybe not get a cold, but <laughs> ruffle through your hair. Get some dead leaves from outside and sprinkle them on your table. <laughs> Turn on a fan and make a mess. It's all about Storm. It's got to be wild. So translate these feelings you're having into your visual material. That, that can be smudgy backgrounds, messy outlines, freaky animations. You have all the possibilities in front of you. Um, and while you're doing that, while you're developing this, this 
look and feel of your game, define a, a tiny, tiny mental style Bible. And style Bible really usually sounds like um, this big, big game, AAA production word, but it's not. It's really just a helpful way of, of, of remembering um, what to be consistent about in your game. So if you're doing outlines, are you going to color your outlines? If so, are you going to color all of your outlines? OK, set this as a rule. All outlines are going to be colored. All the background colors are going to be pale, and all the foreground colors are going to be bright, and all the dialogue fonts are going to have a five-pixel five black stroke around them. Things like these are easy to remember, especially for these tiny game jam projects. And you can save so much time and nerves by um, copy-pasting these layers and layer styles onto everything you need. So do that. And another thing that's very important that helped me a lot during Flood Evader was um, were placeholders. Placeholders are your friends. <laughs> With Flood Evader, I created one single big folder, and I put in a whole ton of very ugly placeholders um, for all the, all the art assets I could possibly think of at this very moment. Make sure that placeholders look crappy. Because when you want to, <laughs> when you want to um, refine them and develop them and, and upgrade them, it, it needs to feel good. Yeah. Um, wow. I just noticed I'm talking way too much. <laughs> yeah. So once you have these placeholders in your folder, prioritize them and um, then start working on them and replace the, fo replace the placeholders in your folder. That sounds dangerous, but it helps to keep the source files in your Photoshop file, um, all these, all these uh, layer styles in there, and then make it easy for the programmer. There's only going to be one smudgy background and not 15, because you experimented. Um, <laughs> so these placeholders can save you so much time. Um, and you're easy to, you, 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 you really know where to work on at which point in time. It makes most sense to start with everything that's going to be on the main game screen, because it, why would you want to sit and polish a logo that's maybe not even going to get implemented? Um, we're coming to the deadline, and the deadline is always the, the, like near the end line, near the end line, near the deadline is usually when most of the help breaks loose, most people start panicking, and you really shouldn't. So, <laughs> uh, because there's no reason to. With Flutivator, we basically um, tricked the deadline. <laughs> we uploaded our, our current game, even if it was pretty unpolished and not very finished, we just, we uploaded it about three hours before the actual deadline. Um, which first at first sounds like a waste of time, but then we had um, a lot of time later on to sit down and calm down and polish whatever you want to polish. Um, about 30 minutes before the actual deadline, we were then able uh, to upload a polished version of our game. Um, because of this, this backup we had, this, this little airbag of our current game of have already being uploaded onto the website, we didn't have we didn't have this this pressure of maybe not making it onto the website in time, like especially within uh, for global game jams. So, create a final game e hours before the deadline, and you'll save yourself a lot of nerves. And with this relaxed atmosphere, you're going to be able to produce a lot more and a lot more effectively. So, next time Tina joins the jam. She'll hopefully know that there's no need to panic. Jams are for fun, and you should never join a jam in hopes for producing a high-quality game piece. Um, she hopefully won't forget that jams are about the experience. If your time runs out, if your game doesn't turn out as expected, that's okay. There's so much more to a jam. There's, you, you're meeting people, you're making friends, you're working together, you're suffering together, you're creating memories together, basically. And this is what a game jam is all about. So I hope this list I <laughs> will be uploading online is going to help all these um, nervous and insecure people to cope with jams. And if they're somewhere lost within their jam, they can 
li read through my list and maybe find some help. And if not, they can contact me and I might help out too. <laughs> so yeah, if there are any questions regarding Game Gems, I'll um, hang around.